What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and whatever time it is. And welcome back to yet another video with you, man, Immersureholic. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another guide for the Divided to Para Overhaul mod for Total War Room 2. And today, everybody, we are checking out AOR units, otherwise known as Area of Recruitment Units, in DEI, that's right. So in this video, we're going to be covering three major things. First off, we're going to be talking about what are AOR units, how to get them, and then my six most underrated AOR units that you need to use in your campaigns when you can, at least when you're in the area, right? Um, you may have heard AOR thrown around a lot, either in my own videos, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, or perhaps you've watched other DEI content and you hear people talking about AOR, AOR this, AOR that, let's go get AOR units. What does it actually mean? So now we'll jump into that. Timestamps will be in the description though, so if you're looking just to go and check out the uh, units that I highly recommend, feel free to go ahead and skip. And also keep an eye out for more videos in the future as I'll be doing more guides and talking about more AOR units and all of the other types of units as well in DEI. Anyway, let's jump into it. So first off, what are AOR units? Well, like I said, they are area of recruitment units. These units belong to a geographical area that they would typically be found in in real life. They're usually localized to a specific city However, sometimes you can find them in more than one city. You can also recruit them anywhere in a province as long as you have at least one city that they are found in under your direct control. And another thing to keep in mind is that these are not mercenaries. You must recruit them over turns just like you would for your own faction units. So if you want to recruit an AOR unit, it's going, it's going to go into the recruitment uh, queue alongside the rest of your men. You cannot recruit them immediately like you can with mercenaries. Now before we move on to my second point, there is a lot of different types of units in DEI so I will just very briefly list them off, uh, at least the most of the major ones. I will do videos in the future breaking them all down and helping you all identify what's useful and what isn't in the future, but just to keep this in mind for yourselves. First off, we do have faction core roster units. These are units that only belong to a specific faction and usually cannot be recruited by any other faction in the game, although there are exceptions that we'll talk about in the future. We then of course have AOR units, the area of recruitment units. Uh, we then have mercenaries. We also have faction based mercenaries, which is a little bit of a subcategory to mercenaries. Again, we'll talk about all of that in another video. We then have Roman auxiliaries. Now this is a big one because we also have a subcategory called Romanized units which are essentially pre-Marian reform units that you can recruit as Rome under the auxiliary barracks system. Again, something else that we'll talk about in another video, but it's worth noting that there are a lot of different types of units in DEI. All of these different types of units allow all of your factions to have their own diverse experiences, as well as being historically accurate and or authentic as well. So let's move on to my second point. How do you actually get them? Well, the main way is that they usually actually belong to a main city or town building chain, such as Roma right here. Or in this case as well, uh, Araminum right here as well. It's going to be in the main building chain that you can see me hovering over. However, there is an exception to this. You can also build migration yellow chain buildings, or more orange, let's be honest, uh, migration or immigrant buildings. As we can see here for the Italian Immigrants building chain, we go down to level 2 and immediately we can see two AOR units, note it's AOR because of the small black and white striped flag here, that we can uh, see what we can get if we build up to level 2. If we build to level 3, we can even get another unit which is actually really helpful. Uh, in this instance, it doesn't have any extra ones for level 4 though. But typically the main way you'll get them is by building and upgrading your different levels of your core settlements. So let's look at Ariminum for example. Level 1, you can access your Italic Levies which is an AOR unit. Let's go up to level 2 though and then we can start getting some nicer AOR units. We have the Tarisky, I mean, Torini Assault Infantry. We also have Companion Hoplites. We then have Italic Swordsmen. And then we have Lucanian Hoplites as well. All because we upgraded our settlement here to level 2. So that's the main way that you'll be recruiting AOR units in general. 
uh, typically there are different levels of them. For example, the level one uh, cities or settlements are only going to provide you with pretty basic AOR units that are usually sort of levies, like the italic levies at Arimidum. However, as you upgrade your settlements, you usually will get better quality units. Uh, that is to say units with higher stats and better armor and equipment overall. There's also a few other things that we have to note about AOR units. For instance, some units are only available to certain cultural groups. So let's go all the way up here to Camilla Dunham, aka modern day London in the province of Britannia. Now we can't see it right now as we go through the main building chain right here. We can see some AOR units, but the particular unit I'm looking for is a unit known as the Kant Kantiaki Champions. This is a really nice heavy infantry unit that's available in this settlement building chain. However, you can only access it if you're playing as a Britain-based faction, such as the Iceni. So if I'm playing as Rome, which I am right now, and we come over here and take over Camilla Dunham, I'm never going to be able to recruit that unit. Now, I don't know why that choice has been made, but it just has been. It may change in the future, who knows. But it's just something worth noting. So essentially, the majority of factions do share AOR units. However, there are some special units that give a little bit of extra flavor and uniqueness because you're playing as a certain cultural group. Another major thing to note is the population level or population social class that you spend on a particular unit. It's usually dependent on the cultural group that you're playing as. For example, since we're playing as Rome, if I come over here to the province of Macedonia and I start recruiting AOR units that are Greek, because I'm playing as a Romans, most of these units are going to be considered the Peregrini or tier four social class right here. This is because they are foreign to me. I'm playing as a Roman, so they're going to be foreigners to us or typically they're going to be more auxiliary style units, right? But if I was playing as Macedon or another Greek or Hellenic faction, they wouldn't be considered foreigners. Usually they would be considered the level 2 class, which is known as the politide social class for the Greeks. So that's something else to keep in mind, and that's also why I won't really talk too much about population class moving forward. But just keep that in mind as you recruit them yourself. Another really important thing to note is that most AOR units in the game are actually limited in the maximum number that you can have in all of your armies. So you're not going to be able to spam any of these units in your armies particularly. Uh, they are adjusted based on game balance as well as historical accuracy. It doesn't make sense that you can make entire armies and armies and armies of a single particular unit. At least not in this particular case. They are here just to add flavor to your armies and give you some unique uh, assistance and roles, especially for factions that are lacking in roster diversity. So do keep that in mind. And then finally, before we move on to our list of AOR units, one thing to note is that some units are actually locked behind certain reform levels. So for example, let's go back over to Palo yet again, and we can see that there is a Furio Spear unit, a Thessalian Furio Spear unit in particular. A very nice unit to add to your Roman legions, however, it is locked behind the Furios reforms, of course, right? It makes sense. So that's something else to keep note of. There isn't all that many units that are locked behind reforms. However, some of them are also locked behind the technology tree. Uh, so if we go here, we go to our construction tree, we can see that this is the level of construction you need in order to attain level three settlements, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. So you do need to research that. You can't just instantly build say a level 3 settlement in Pella, and what we, we get access to, we would get Thessalian Cavalry, some War Dogs, some Molossian Hounds actually, and Macedonian Pikemen, all of which are really nice AUR units, but we do need to research it first. So you do have those two sort of minor restrictions, reforms and technology research. But anyway everybody, that's enough about how to get AUR units and what they are. Now let's jump in to my list of AOR units that are severely underrated. These are six must-have units in your armies when you can in DEI. So let's do this. Now before we mention every unit in this list, I do want to give a little bit of a disclaimer here. I realize that this list is not comprehensive. There are literally hundreds of AOR units. It's not possible to cover them all in a single video. And I am intentionally ignoring some of the mainstream AOR units that everybody and their mother knows about when playing. For example, 
Balearic Slingers that you can get from the Balearic Islands. I'm not going to talk about them in this video besides this mention because everybody knows about it. What I want to do is really focus on underrated AOR units that will absolutely help you and your armies conquer the known world, all for world peace, of course, right? Anyway, just do keep that in mind. I will intentionally skip over certain units as we are only listing six AOR units at this time. But again, we'll do more videos covering more AOR units in the future. And as well, I would really love to see your uh, suggestions in the comments down below. Maybe you can help me out or maybe you can help out another DEI player. What AOR units do you highly recommend for anyone else who loves using AOR units? Which we all do, right? It's a massive part of what makes DEI really immersive and organic. So for our first unit, we're going to be talking about the Illigurtan or Illigatan Heavy Skirmishes. Not really a unit that is mentioned a lot, but in my opinion, it's really, really helpful. We go all the way over here to the province of Lusitania, which has Elisipo uh, and then Ibora. In the city of Ibora, we go ahead and we check out the settlement system here. And then we can see at tier 3, we can get access to this Illigurtan Heavy Skirmisher. These bad boys come at you with a melee attack of 13, a defense of 10 as well, which is really, really nice. An armor of 20, and they have guerrilla deployment, plus they can hide in a bunch of different terrain. Very, very nice unit to have in your armies. They don't require a reform, and thus they can be really helpful for your early to mid campaigns once you can build those tier 3 settlements. Very nice addition to any army, legion, phalanx, or otherwise. Very versatile too. For our next unit, we're coming back over here towards the middle of the map, and we're going to the city of Taurus in the province of Magna Gratia. Here we have a bunch of different AOR units, but in particular, I want to point out the Apulian Heavy Infantry. These bad boys are available to you once you build the level 3 settlement right here, and as you can see, their stats are redonkulous. A melee attack of 11 alongside a defense of 19. That is insane. That's higher than Spartan units. They also have an armor of 35 and a base morale of 43. These guys are the elite of the elite. They are incredible. Very, very useful for you. They don't require a form. However, again, you do need to build those tier 3 settlements. Don't worry. A lot of the other units I'm about to talk about don't require it, but the Apulian Heavy Infantry are just a must-have for any uh, army in the region. They're very helpful when you're playing as Epirus, as it's a unit that can outclass the Roman Legions, although your AOR units are limited in number. Regardless, this is a must-have unit for all of your armies. Next up, we have the absolute beastly Lechonki Syrian Elephants. Now, this is a little bit more of a well-known one, However, I did want to highlight these guys. They're just absolutely incredible. We go to the province of Syria for this one in the city of Antiochia. They do require the settlement to be tier 3. However, with elephants, typically the stats aren't necessarily what you're interested in. Although there are some interesting stats to note for these bad boys. Um, one of the main things that you need to know about though is how many there are in a single group. What's their overall mass or how big are they basically? and the armor. So for the Syrian war elephants, one thing to note is that they have a 12 armor. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider that Mauryan war elephants, at least the AOR variant, don't even get an armor of 12, that's actually very substantial. Um, they are just at 10. So Syrian war elephants are bigger than African elephants that you get in like Egypt and Carthage, and they can absolutely take on the Mauryan elephants of the east. And their AOR unit. So anyone can get them once they take over Antiochia. They also have a very respectable size where they have 36 handlers or uh, infantry assigned to them in total. So that's two men per elephant. This results in you having 18 heavy elements in a single contingent. But all of these elephants have towers on top of them for skirmishing. And like I said, they can take on Morian heavy elephants. An absolute must have unit for your armies when you're in the area. Although these guys are definitely limited in number to being, I believe at the time right now, just four in total is all you can recruit, but that may change in the future. Next up, we go over to the province of Mesopotamia. In Mesopotamia, in any of the cities actually, we can get access to the Babylonian Heavy Spearmen. Now, anyone who watched my Parthian campaign on YouTube will know how helpful these guys can be. They come in with some very nice stats. An attack of eight, which doesn't sound like a lot, 
However, these are more of like a heavy spearman or hoplite unit. So a melee attack of 8 still respectable, but they come in with a melee defense of 17. And their most attractive stat to me is their armor at 35. That's really, really high for an AOR unit. Um, these guys will be excellent as a defensive unit in defending perhaps your capital of Seleucia if you're playing as the Seleucids. Or they'll be an excellent supplement to your cavalry based armies, say if you're playing as the Parthians in the east. Um, these guys are an absolute masterclass in defense. They even have the defensive formation ability to increase the defense even more. And they also are disciplined, so they will not rout easily. These guys are basically the bodyguards of Mesopotamia. Hire them, absolutely, you will not regret it. Now for our next one, we're coming back to the middle of the map. This is a bit of a theme I try to focus on where uh, I'm trying to get units that are typically around the center of the map, although I did make a few exceptions. But in this case, there's no way I can ignore this unit. We're going all the way to the province of Hellas in the city of Sparta. Sparta, as we know, has no walls, and its walls are right here, this big juicy shield. This is the Spartan Hoplites. Now, this might not be a unit that you would expect to be an excellent AOR unit, because you usually just think of them as being a part of the faction of Sparta. However, there's a lot of playable factions in and around Greece, so they could be useful to a lot of different factions. Again, they're coming in with some very nice stats, similar to the Babylonian Spear when we just talked about. They're coming in with a melee attack of 8, a melee defense of 17, an armor of 30, but in my opinion, the most attractive stat is their base morale at 43. That's really, really nice. These guys have the morale of a general. That's really, really fantastic. Combined with the discipline buff, which helps them not rout in the middle of combat. And then you also have the phalanx ability with these bad boys. Incredible unit to have. And it really provides you with some solid, reliable defense on certain points of your battle line. Excellent unit. They're still some of the best hoplites you can get in the game, at least for this sort of level. They do get outclassed by veteran uh, hoplites and, you know, more elite units. But that's a worry for another day. This would just be an excellent supplement for your armies, whether it's Roman legions or perhaps the neighboring Athenians need to complement their phalanx with something a little bit more reliable which is definitely a word I would use to describe the Spartan Hoplites. And lastly, we come over here to Thrace. Thrace being a massive province of four cities, which is really, really nice. However, the main attraction here is, of course, the Thinny Romphire Warriors. You can get this in any of the settlements in the province of Thrace. However, if you want to be a little bit cheeky, take over the, uh, the city of Nasos right here because you can actually recruit the Finny Run Fire Warriors at level 1 here. Otherwise, all of the other cities do require it to be level 2. Just a nice little cheeky uh, heads up to all of you. Uh, these guys are the absolute butchers of any army that they're involved in. Their attack is disgusting at 15, defense of just 6, but their armor of 20 will help keep them protected. They also have a total weapon damage of 36, with 11 of that being armor penetrating. Despite being limited in number, they will cut through many phalanxes and legions. They are disgusting, and they're available to you once you take over any city in this province at level 2 or Nasos at level 1. Alright everybody, that's where we're going to wrap up our short little guide for the AOR units in Divide at Impera. Now, as I said, I will be doing more videos in the future pointing out certain AOR units that are really good for certain factions or perhaps certain roleplay scenarios. Again, please do leave your suggestions on what AOR units you highly recommend to everyone down in the comments below. I would love to hear especially your more unknown secretive ones. I have a few more up my sleeve, but I didn't want to spoil you all too much right here. Uh, another thing I recommend is also go out and enjoy and explore for yourself. Try out different factions, see what units are available in the area. I will also be leaving links to the Divided Tempera website where you can actually look at a map on their website that will tell you all of the different AOR units you can get in every single province in the game. Very, very helpful link. Make sure you go check that out. And they also have a unit database on their website that lists the units and stats of all AOR units. The stats sometimes aren't exactly on point and can be slightly off, so I'd more so trust what you see in game. But again, you have access to at least all of the names and locations of all AOR units in DEI. So if you want to go ahead and do your own exploring, I highly recommend it. But make sure you subscribe to the channel so that way you don't miss out 
on any other guides or special highlights that we pop out there. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one.